This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex and this is The Ramble and we go until midnight tonight in New York, New York. What the hell is that? It's a I, I was saying, no, no, you, you look like, you remember, you remember pulp magazines from the 30s? I mean, sure. you've seen pictures of them. Yes, and there was a there was a pulp magazine called The Shadow, okay, which then became a radio program. But uh, it, it was called The Shadow, and that's what The Shadow looked like on the front of those pulp magazines. Was that right? So I feel like I'm looking at a pulp magazine. All right. Okay. So I'll leave it at that. How you doing, Steve Kravitz? I'm doing all right. Huh? I'm doing all right. Yeah, yeah. It's getting cold here. Oh God, it was. It's getting cold here too. We're supposed to go down in New York City, and this is unusual to like minus three degrees or something. Yeah, we're supposed to go uh, like that also on Saturday, right? Yeah, like I've I've never seen the minus before. In in I think almost my, all my time in New York City, both times, I I don't think I've ever seen minus. Is that right? I mean, I've seen minus when you add in the wind chill factor, but I don't uh, I don't consider that the temperature right you know. right i know some people do it's, and, it's 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 supposed to be windy also it's supposed to be minus minus three and windy oh okay and uh, then you have to go out right uh hopefully not don't you have to go to work yeah yeah so how far is work from you 20 minutes oh okay all right yes he works for a large industrial firm yeah right. Uh, uh, and uh, Lowe's. He's in. He's he's in private accounting, or something. Yeah right. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm, I'm in public accounting. Public accounting. Now you're over at uh, at. Uh, you're not Home Depot. You're the other one. Lowe's. 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 Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what I heard about? Were you the one who told me? Yeah, you were the one who told me about about Home Depot being right wing. Right. Yeah. Their political stance. Yeah. And Lowe is more left wing. Is that just because of the way they operate their business? I mean, I think it was you said, or or somebody said to me, that at, at Home Depot, they don't like people with long hair or beards or whatever, you know. Right. And Lowe's, they'll hire anybody. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, so gay, straight, purple hair, red hair, orange hair. How about, how about a guy who's 83 years old? Yeah, they hire you. They would? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. I mean, I guess you go look for a job at Lowe's. Well, do we need to work? Well, I, I need to do something. You know, I, I don't get out of this house at all. I just I just sit here, and then I, I say, well, I'll go out. And then they go, but it's 32 degrees. You know, forget it. You know? Right. Um... Is Maybe that, you should go out when it's minus three just to experience it. Well, I may do that. But here's the thing I don't get. See, like I was thinking about the other day. Is it our age that we don't go out as much when the weather's bad? I mean, I seem to remember when I was in my 30s living in New York and it got really cold. I went outside anyway. Right, right, right. You know? I, sure you did. And well, you had places to go then. Now where you got to go? Well, Where you, do you have to go now? The other thing is, the, I have never, I can say, I've never had uh, cabin fever in this apartment, okay? Whereas in one-bedroom small apartments, yes. Right. Yeah. I've been out of the housing market here in New York for years because I've been in this apartment. And there's this guy on uh, YouTube who does these tours of uh, really small apartments. And he goes to this apartment, it's like, you know, it's got like, uh, it's uh, maybe 
300 square feet, maybe less, like 150 square feet. And they're really? And they're charging like $2,000 a month rent. Right, right. Isn't that absurd? And I'm going, when did that happen? You know, Marjorie is renting an apartment she owns for 2000 a month. And after watching these things, I looked at her and I said, You're, those people are really lucky. They got you for a landlord. Right. You know? Because I said, if they ever move out, you should move it up to at least $3,000, a month. It's a one-bedroom apartment. And in one-bedroom apartment in Manhattan, this guy's going around, there's a one-bedroom apartment, they say it's 3500 bucks, and he says, oh, that's cheap. And what? That's cheap? That's absurd. That's absurd. I'm in 2,500 square feet, Okay. Uh, I, I'm Which large. Is huge. Huh? Yeah. I mean, my I, I have a foyer that's larger than most of these apartments. This guy looks at. Okay. Oh, I'm sure. It's huge, and even if I didn't go through this whole legal thing we went through and everything, and I was just paying the rent stabilized amount, it would only be twenty two hundred twenty five dollars. So where do they get these things of thirty five hundred bucks for like a one bedroom apartment? Because that's the market. Yeah. And this guy puts uh, puts these things up and he goes, in, cheapest apartment in New York, $650, right? And I'm going, well, maybe he thinks so, but it's not right. true because I have the cheapest apartment in New York. No, he, he means the cheapest apartment that you can rent today. Well, uh, yes, but, but still, he says the cheapest apartment in New York. And and six hundred and fifty don't make it. I I'm cheaper, you know. I got the I get, we got the deal of a lifetime. Finally, it only costs yeah, no kidding. it only costs us one hundred and seventy five thousand dollars to get it. Is that right? Yeah, but you you amortize that over like nine years, and it's about a, about eighteen hundred dollars a month rent. But for this. You know, the room right. I do this show out of is bigger than most of these apartments this guy is looking at. Right. You know, I mean, this is my living room here. This is a picture, actually, of it. It's not, you know, I'm doing a green screen back here. But th this is my living room. And on the other side of the living room is a dining room with another fireplace. It's huge. Yeah. And, uh, See the size of this room, the living room? Mm -hmm. The kitchen is about that big. <laughs> and then there's You're a lucky man. And then there's a hallway, and there's a bedroom out to one side, and then there's another bedroom at the end of the hallway that's smaller, and then there's this room, which is kind of off a little alcove. Yeah, you know, look at what I'm getting. So it's two bedrooms. A living three, room, three a bed, patio. Three, three bedrooms. Oh, three bedrooms. Okay, three bed. Well, let's start at the beginning. A foyer. Right. Okay. Uh, a living room, this thing here. A dining room. Okay. Uh, a a kitchen. All right, that's, that's four things. There's also a pantry, five. There's an, a bathroom, six. Okay, then we go uh, 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 over, down the hall and there's a bedroom, seven. Then there's a, uh, eight is, uh, is, is a guest room. Nine is the room I'm in doing the show from. So I got nine, what, nine rooms in this apartment? Uh, oh, no, you have another, got your bedroom, oh, I, ten. No, there's, oh, there's also a bathroom too. So it's 11. It's 11 room apartment. So two baths, three bedrooms. Yeah, a foyer, a kitchen, a dining room, a living room, and a pantry. The pantry used to be the maid's room. And off the maid's room, there's a bathroom. So, ta-da. Pretty, pretty huge. It's, it's bigger than the pretty house. Impressive. You're in a house, right? Yeah. It's bigger than your house. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Easily. Well, how many feet? Do you know how many square feet that place is? No, it is. I, I have no yeah. idea. No. Yeah. But uh, it, and so what they're doing now on these these videos is they're going into an apartment and saying, "Oh, this apartment's fifty five hundred dollars a month," 
but it has four bedrooms, so that only comes down two, and then they figure you're going to go out and get four roommates. Yeah, right. I don't want roommates. I just want an apartment, okay? Right. So, I mean, it's really the whole, the whole, it's gone crazy. You know, if we ever, if we were ever, say, kicked out of this apartment, we'd probably have to move out of Manhattan. Oh, absolutely. We, we couldn't afford Manhattan any longer. Absolutely. You know, I mean, it's just too much. But, uh, uh, you know, I just, uh, but, but that's not going to happen because we have all kinds of court orders now and things like that. Because we've got to, you know, the judge ordered that the rent would be $500.07 a month. And then they went and appealed it to an appeals court. And the appeals court said, screw you, we're letting the, everything that the f first judge said stand. Okay? So get out of our appeals court. And that was it. That's the most they can do. So well, they're stuck with charging us this until next year when every two years they get to raise the rent by a certain amount. And in our in our case, it's about it's about about five percent, maybe let's say four percent. Yeah, that, that sounds about right. Five percent. So five five percent. Five percent of five hundred is what, you know, ten uh, percent would be fifty, so twenty five dollars more a month. Uh, yeah, I can afford it. You know, usually Marjorie and I divide our rent and uh, and and utilities and things like that and uh, she pays half I pay half but I decided I'm paying all the rent mainly because why not it's 500 bucks a month uh, how know? much are the utilities my utilities uh, our utilities come to uh, a, I would say once you get them all together during the summer especially summer months it's over $500 a month. Yeah, I'm paying more in utilities. I'm paying in in rent. In rent, yeah, yeah. So what the hell, you know? But utilities are ridiculous too. I got an electric. Oh yeah. I got an electric bill three hundred dollars a month. Now I know I have a lot of equipment here, but right. but a lot of this equipment, like a computer, doesn't draw that much power. Right. Okay. You can tell how much power something draws by how hot it gets. Like if you have something like a computer and it gets really hot, then it's right. using up more electricity than another computer that isn't. And I've got a computer here. I can't even feel heat coming out of it practically. There's right. a little bit of heat. Today I can feel the heat only because it's so damn cold. You know. Yeah, and because you're looking for it. Yeah, I'm looking for it. But anyway, so, but you know, but, and so the fact that you've managed to find a place and you know how much are you paying to your friend for your seven? Seven? God, you got a good deal, right? And you got a whole house to roam around, right? You know, I'm sure you're not in your bedroom right now. No. See, so you, you know, it's good. It's terrific. So, what's new in the life of uh, Steve Kravitz? I hope to move to California in the summer. You good. I'm your, I'm your, I'm your, uh, I'm your uh, rah rah team here. In, okay. Uh, when do you want to move? In the summer. In the summer. Are you looking? It'll take me that long to save up enough money. Are you looking right now what what you can get to live in, or, or do you have? Friends? I'm going to start looking in March. Or do you have friends you can stay with? Now I'm going to start looking and, and hitting up people in March. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think really that would be good for you, you know, because yeah. I, mean, I I think being where you are, you move back what is essentially your home, right? So you're there with relatives and so on and so forth, and that's nice, right? Your job, however, is in L.A. or you could right. you could move to New York. You know, New York's a big production town too. Yeah, but I'd rather go somewhere where it's warm. Okay, okay. And has, uh, has forest fires, uh, and floods, and, and mudslides. And mudslides. Yeah, you know, anywhere you go these days, forget it. Right. You know, I mean, it's it's terrible. I I hate these people who say, "Oh, there's no such thing as global warming." Oh yeah. Well, right. 
What are all these floods? I mean, all, these are all ridiculously impactive climatological problems we're right. having. Now. We had the warmest January on record this past January. Really? Yeah. Yeah, and and how about the amount of snow that dropped last month? I mean, upstate New York, you, you couldn't, you know, it was, it was taller than you were. Right. You know, and and uh, um, uh, in California, they got the floods. They were preceded oh, yeah. by the forest fires. You're going to tell them, and people go, well, that has nothing to do with climate. Absolutely has everything to do with climate. Sure. You know? I mean, it really pisses me off, to tell you the truth. Uh, I wish it didn't. Like the deniers? The deniers piss me off, yeah. Because by denying it, you're only putting off a the things we've got to do to try and prevent it. Right. You know? And, and, uh. Well, prevent it. We can't prevent it. It's already happening. We need to just slow it down. Yeah. Well, you know, when I hear about, like, uh, polar bears, uh, genitalia are shrinking. I don't know who goes out to figure that out. I and mean, I don't know why you know that. Uh, no, I read it somewhere that uh, their, their genitalia are shrinking. You know. Did they say why? Because of climate change. Just climate change. People don't understand that climate change really affects everything. You know? And the fact, and climate change is affected by the things we put into the atmosphere that create that climate change. So we have to kind of come up with answers to all these questions soon because there's going to be a point at which there's no return. Right. And this planet is going to be screwed. Because, you know, I mean, let's face it. Mother Nature is not going to sit around and say, hey, you can fuck me up. I don't mind. No. Nature. No, no. Na Mother Earth is pissed. Nature is going to attack. Okay? Nature is going. Long after we're all dead here, nature will still exist. It existed. Oh, yeah, in some know. form. Well, it existed the extinction of the dinosaurs. Right. You know, it's it, the only other thing that will last. I hear roaches were here bef with the dinosaurs, and they were the only thing that didn't get destroyed by those giant meteors that hit the earth. Also, uh, like alligators and crocodiles. Really? They're very prehistoric, aren't they? Right. Yeah. I don't know which one's more, but, you know, alligators and crocodiles. Uh, um, I'm trying to remember what the difference between an alligator and a crocodile is. It has to do with the way the their eyes are set, their, their nose. The nose? One the nose and, and the way their eyes are set. Okay, so the nose is shorter on what? On the alligator. Okay, all right. So you're safer being around alligators than you are around crocodiles because crocodiles. I don't think you're safe around either one of them. Well, to tell you the truth. I wouldn't want to be near any of them. But they're, they're very prehistoric. You know? Oh yeah. Uh, what else? What else was I was thinking was kind of prehistoric? Eh, no, that's about it. You know. My act. Your your act. Yeah, your act will survive the ice age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's your the ice age. Yeah. Anyway, so um, but going back to California, I think that I. I you know, I would love to move back to California, but everybody tells me, you know, because I'm from San Francisco. That's where I would move. I, that's where I'd move back to. I wouldn't move back to, to L.A. That's a, Couldn't afford it. It's not only that I couldn't afford it. It's it's. Uh, I never liked L.A. L.A. is a, a terrible. No, I, I mean, you couldn't afford I don't know if you could afford San Francisco. Oh, San Francisco oh. probably couldn't afford that either. I would probably, what I would do is I would move up to Sonoma or someplace like that and get a little, right, place, right. little, little place out in the country. That would be nice. Sebastopol. Yeah, that's the way to spend your life, you know? Uh, uh, but uh, I love San Francisco, and uh, but people tell me I would not love it anymore. They say it's just horrible. It's just completely changed. What happened was... See, what happens is you have a great little town. People grow up in it. It's, uh, it's a community that it has its flavor. San Francisco has a great flavor. You have to admit right. that. You know? I mean, those hills and the fog rolling in and the, you know, the cable cars and the whole thing. It's just, it's just magical. Magical. But 
you then get people moving in uh, to California and to the San Francisco Bay Area to go work at these uh, these tech companies. And they all have a different attitude about things. And the rents get raised because of, of them. And uh, just the whole place goes to crap because of these people who moved in for the tech business. And so I think I think San Francisco is more expensive than Los Angeles. Oh, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. I don't live out in the valley. Hmm? I live out in the San Fernando Valley. Uh, the San Fernando Valley is kind of nice, you know. Right. Uh, that's kind of nice. But the thing is, when my parents rented an apartment in San Francisco. If I'm not mistaken, the apartment costs thirty-five dollars a month. I think it may have been lower. And now that same apartment, you know, you're lucky if you can get it for three thousand, four thousand a month. You know, and it was a big apartment. It had a living room. It had a bedroom for me. It had a bedroom for my parents. Right. Uh, you know, it had uh, it had a huge kitchen. It had a kind of a deck. Not a deck, but a, you know, kind of a porch. But it was an enclosed inside porch. Okay. Uh, it was a fairly big apartment up on Telegraph Hill. You know, which is like this. Okay. Right. I used to walk up the street all the time like that, and everybody, when I was growing up, the rest of my life, said, "Why do you always look like you're walking into the wind?" <laughs> and, and I said, "It's because I grew up on a hill like that, you know, and you, you, your whole life." And your whole attitude and your inclination becomes that. Some some of the hills actually have stairs. Yes, they have. Ours had steps at a certain point. Right. But, but I didn't mind. I learned how to you know run up and down those hills and. Uh, sure. You know that that was that was my life. You know. But anyway, it, it so I mean it was a, it was a great town. Just it was just wonderful. It was magical. Right. Um, and uh, and my and then we moved to Marin County, and that was nice. It was when oh, I, that's real nice. Yeah, when I was uh, let's see here, how old was I when we moved? I was about ten, maybe nine. And we moved over to Marin. I think I was ten, and uh, we moved to Mill Valley, and then we moved to a house in uh, in uh, San Anselmo. The house they bought was eleven, what nine thousand dollars. It was big. Yeah, the house I grew up in was seventeen. R really? Yeah. Yeah. This was eleven uh, nine thousand, and it had a bunch of steps that led up to it, which, uh, again, I got all my exercise in early life that way. Right, uh, because right. I had a now you don't have to exercise. I had a bicycle. We didn't want to leave the bicycle downstairs, so I had to actually uh, put the bicycle on my shoulder and walk up, I think it was right. 75 steps or something like that, you know. But anyway, in the very top was the house, and it was a two-level house, and, you know, big house. And uh, it was $9,000. My mother, when she finally sold it, I think sold it for 135000 and she thought she was making a killing. But like three years later, that house became worth something like 500000 And today, it's probably a million and a half, I would right. imagine, you know. And yeah, my father sold our house for two fifty. Well, I kept trying to tell my mother, "Hey, you know, we got to, you know, you don't, you shouldn't sell that house." And she's, "Well, I can't. I don't want to keep making the payments." You no, know, she was making payments. I want to make the money off of it. And I went, "Look, I'll, I'll pay the rent if you want me to. Just keep the house for a while." Right. I was thinking about me too, you know. Uh, and uh, she said, "Now nah, I'm going to sell it." So she sold it. And then she, I mean, she got what was good money for the time, uh, and and she thought she was making a killing. But a couple of years later, while she was still alive, that house went for uh, uh, for at least five hundred thousand dollars. Because then the mous housing market, the housing market grew, you know. So, yeah. So yeah, now it's probably a million plus. Next time we talk, I'd like to find out a little more about you growing up in, in Wooster and what that was like for you, you know. Because, <laughs> no, because it, it, we are, in our later lives, I think somewhat formed by the place we grew up. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm always still a San Franciscan to this day. Right. You know, I, right. I, I'm glad I live in New York, but, you know, uh, 
uh, it, 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 I, I just think of myself as that kid in San Francisco or that kid right. in San Anselmo, you know. Uh, I, I think that's where your heart always lies. I mean, you don't say to yourself, I hate Wooster, because you move back to it. Right. You know? Right. It, it gives you a certain kind of sense of comfort, but maybe you don't need that comfort any longer. Right? right. Anyway, that's it for now. That's it. Good talking to you, Steve. See Good you, talking to you, Alex. See you next time. Bye-bye. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, oh, wait a minute. Let me turn on the lights. There we go. I forgot to turn on the lights. I Son of a bitch. Anyway, hello everybody. How are you? Uh, there's and only one person waiting, and that's Jeff, uh, to come on the show. So we could use some more people. I don't know where everybody is. Uh, Thursdays are becoming our light night, and I don't know why. Well, there's Brian Neary. He's joining too. So we'll get to him in a second. Well, let's get to them now. What the hell? You know? I mean, uh, let me just. Uh, by the way, when I was doing the thing with uh, with him, with uh, Kravitz, I noticed I was over here like this. I don't know why, because I usually try to center myself. Oh, well. Anyway, let's see here. Let's get these people in here. Let's bring them in. There we go. There's Jeff. Uh, Jeff, you're Hi, still up in Connecticut, right? I still am. How's the weather up there? Tomorrow we're leaving. Tomorrow, tomorrow you're leaving. Mm -hmm. You're gonna be snowbirds, huh? Yeah, we gotta, we gotta beat the weather. Yeah. So how long are you gonna be down there? I'll be um, six weeks. Six six weeks. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Must be nice. Yeah. I mean, he'll keep calling the show because he calls from oh, down yeah. there. You know. What else are you gonna do? Just like us. What else are we gonna do? Yeah, you know. I mean. Well, I don't know why you call this show, Brian. You got a job and everything. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you, you know. <laughs> I feel I have to call the show because all the endless days that you entertained me. Oh, really? So I, I know. I, now you're, so supp I, you're supposed to entertain me. I see. Yeah, but if I hear you die tomorrow, I'm gonna feel bad that I stop calling. Jeez. <laughs> well, it's always possible, you know. But then what are we going to do? All of us are just going to sit around at 8 o'clock or whatever time it is there. and Yeah, just... well, I'm not going anytime soon. I, I got the doctor call, wrote me this morning. Oh, good. And uh, I have no detectable PSA. So, Thanks, God. So I'm, I'm fine. But So I, now what are you going to talk about for a week? <laughs> I've got nothing else to talk about, so good night. <laughs> I know. <laughs> What's you think he doesn't call, you know, or leave you a message? At least it gives you another week of material. Oh, look who's here, though. Uh, although I, I think he's he's having to do it oh. in the... Yeah, look look at that. That's the light off his phone is lighting him. Is that what it is? No, I've got a lantern here that... <laughs> that uh, <laughs> oh, um, my God. Are you, are you getting oh, mail, is... Charlie? I don't know. I haven't gone. I have not opened the door to my apartment. That's the only oh. reason it's as high as fifty-two degrees in here is because I've never opened the door or window oh. or anything. Well, you could. Do you have a no. gas oven? No, it's all electric. Oh god! No heat, no hot water, no nothing I... for forty-one hours now. I'll send you some hot water. <laughs> They're saying six o'clock tomorrow night. And yet, these, night and yet these, these assholes where you live will re-elect Greg Abbott, right? Yeah. We never had these problems before the permanent Republican majority in 2000. Ah, yeah. So ever since then, it's just gotten worse and worse and worse. Well, well, I, mean, I, mean, well I mean, look at what what he's done there. He's, you know, yeah. I mean, he, he, he made a deal where he wasn't going to get be part of the national power grid. Yep. Uh, for whatever reason. And this is the result. If you were part yep. of this power grid, it probably would be working now because it's it's not the electricity that's down, but it's the grid, right? 
Well, actually, right now in Austin, it's, it's the electricity because of all the tree branches that are broken and falling on wires. Right, but uh, it, yeah. generally in the state, it's because the grid is down. Yeah, that those are the problems. Like in the summer when we had all that 108, 109 degree weather and, and they were having uh, rolling blackouts, that was the grid. Yeah, so anyway. So We've never had that. We've had freezing rain and ice storms and stuff before. But before 2000, we never lost power like this. Wow. wow. They have a lot of they have a lot of Tom Cruise. I mean, not Tom. What's the team? Cruise. What's the name? They have yeah. a lot. Of, uh, Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz yeah. They have a lot of memes about him about Groundhog Day. They show him like yeah. going to the airport with a mask <laughs> on. They oh, it's Groundhog Day. We're gonna have six more months of this weather because uh, Tom Cruise is taking off or Ted, Ted Cruz. Cruise is taking off to uh, uh, Cancun yeah. again. <laughs> Yeah, he's, I haven't heard from him since all this happened. <laughs> maybe he's there. He's maybe down in Cancun. Can and you, you uh, oh my get power on at all? What? Who, me? Oh, but yeah. yeah, there's places in Austin that have power. There's only about a third of the city, a, a quarter of the city that's uh, out of power right now. And you're part of that quarter. And I'm part of that quarter, yep. It, it doesn't have to, by any chance, to be a black neighborhood, does it? No, no, but oh, it is okay. a Republican neighborhood. Somebody pointed that out. <laughs> yeah, this is Williamson County where they vote mostly Republican. No. Not me, but they did. So yeah. they, they're getting what they wanted. <laughs> you need a sign out the window to say, I voted Republican. Maybe they'll put your power back on. <laughs> yeah. I, I like how long your battery lasts on your iPhone. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. I've had, I only had to charge it three times. And it's still yeah. got over half the charge left on the battery. Oh, so good, I'm, on that charger. Yeah. Yeah. Alex, I sent you yesterday, I ordered you the quick charger, the charging cable, and a battery pack like he's got a high-power battery pack, and you'll have it on Saturday. It might according. actually fit in this thing that I have. I don't know. According to Amazon. So. Yeah. I mean, what does it look like? Let me see. It's square, and I don't know. Here's one. It's rectangular. You mean? Yeah. Well. Yeah. Here's what mine looks like. Yeah. Oh, well, we have the same it. one. It's it's about yours is yeah. going to yeah. be a little smaller. Well, here, here, here here's the one that I had in this thing, but it's kind of out now. It's not. It's not. Well, this isn't out, so you'll get a brand charging. new one. It, it's not charging anymore, but look, this I don't know. Well, it might fit in it. I don't know. Fit in it. It fit in the uh, charger here. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, he you know, sent you a whole charger, though. You don't need him to I'm go inside. I'm sending you a there. charger and a charging cable. You can get rid of that old battery. Yeah. And then you charge, charge the new one up. It'll take about five hours to charge up, and you know, you'll I, have I, a, I a, a really, really good backup. I, I never actually even used this thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. So. <clears throat> That's okay. I, I so, bought it a long well, time ago. I bought it a long time at Costco, and what I use it for now is it has three outlets here. And, you have a and quick I, charge. Do you have a quick charger for your phone? Well, that's what this is. This is a quick charger. No, no. Other than the battery, do you have a quick charger that you put your iPhone on? What do you mean a quick charger? Uh, well, the iPhone, I don't know, 12 came out with where when your iPhone gets below 50%, mm -hmm. so from 0 to 50%, the quick charger at 18 water higher charger yeah i don't know i i just i just take the thing and i put it in a thing at night okay well you're gonna you're gonna this this includes a a, a high a high watt charger yeah well all i care about is my watch and i have some fast watch uh, watch chargers so. okay well this thing's a fast iphone so the first if you ran your iphone to zero the yeah. first 50 percent would be uh 30 minutes there you go yeah. Fast so I felt terrible tonight. Really terrible. I did something terrible to Marjorie. Uh oh. Well, see, I got mad at her because she came home today and she knew that I was waiting for the doctor. You know, you all knew I was waiting for the doctor to write mm -hmm. me, right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, if yeah. you knew, she knew more than anybody because I'm asking her every five minutes, do you think I'm going to be okay? Do you think I'm going to be okay? So she comes home, and, and, and uh, you know, she's had a lot of problems lately physically, and I, I take great pity on that, and I worry about her and so on. And, you know, I ask her questions when she comes back from her doctor. 
She comes home today from another doctor's appointment, and she doesn't ask me, did you hear from the doctor? Because she knew I was going to want to hear from the doctor today. So I decided I would wait all I would wait as long as it took mm. to see how long it would take her to ask me, did you hear from the doctor? And I never heard from her. She never said anything about it. So finally, about 7 o'clock tonight, I, I said to her, you know, I'm a little di uh, disappointed in you. And she said, why? I said, you haven't asked me about, my do about you know, my, the, what the doctor had to say. Oh, she said, oh, that, he was going to do it today? I said, you knew that, you know. And she said, well, how did it, well, how did it turn out? And I said, uh, I have cancer again. And Beautiful. she just gasped horribly, and I immediately said, I'm only kidding. Because I mean, I didn't want to. I didn't want to push the joke any longer. But I figured if she didn't ask, I would like tell her something, you know, other than you know. So and I then I felt terrible about that. Well, how long were you unconscious? How long was I unconscious? I mean, after, yeah, when she hit you. When, after doing she that. hit me, yes. But anyway, so yeah. But the uh, lady in the back agreed uh, on that. Huh? The lady in the back agreed. Agreed hit what? You in the head on that one. She should have hit me. Yeah. 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 Well, it was only a, I only said it for one second, and then I took it back. I said I'm only kidding, <laughs> you know. But I felt terrible. I didn't want to scare her like that. I just wanted to teach her a lesson, you know. Because I mean, it could have turned out the other way too, but it didn't. And it probably won't. And, uh, you know. What is the new ailment that we'll hear about for weeks? Uh, nothing nothing <laughs> today. Nothing today. Um, Good. I'm glad that your test turned out negative. Yes. Yeah. But it's not negative. What it is is it's a, it's a, it's a number. And if, it's high, if it goes up, like I've just been getting these undetectables. And, you know, if it starts to jump a little bit, then they say, well, maybe we better check this out, you know, so. But I'm, I'm you know, I, so I have another year to live because in a year they do the test again. Is it below one, your PSA? Oh, it's it's negligible. It's undetectable. Okay. It's, oh, okay, good. It's good. below point zero two. Yeah, mine's always been point six. Point six. That's good. Yeah, it's great. One you point know. oh. 1.0 yeah yeah it's my, it's everybody my here life, seems to but... everything every guy here probably knows his psa number <laughs> do, you, do you know brian oh, yeah no i could look it up yeah they, they sent it to me i just had my uh blood done like uh, last yeah i think brian's and tony's were both 17. do you know yours uh, uh jeff <laughs> No, I remember okay. it right now. Yeah. Well, anyway, I mean, you know, I mean, it could be. It's good. You're you're just fine there, Alan. But you know, one day, all of a sudden, it could go jumping, and you've got yeah. some prostate. That, service. That's what happens to everybody on this show, right? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, well, let's see here. Me, Phil, Tony, Tony. I guess that's it, right? For now, you know. It. It, 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 you get to be my age, your chances of getting it are very good. Yep. But I do. They do suggest now that people go and have their prostate exam. It used to be when you're 50, and I think they're saying now 45. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just to be on the safe side, you know. Yep. Uh, and hopefully you don't get it young. If you get it when I got it, you know, I mean, um, it's not as it's not as deadly. When you get it when you're older, for some reason. Yeah. But anyway, enough about that. You know, are you people out there tired about hearing about medical things here on the show? <laughs> you know, well, not me. It's my life. Hmm? <laughs> medical issues are my life. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You know, uh, and uh, how many toes do you have left? I have four toes left. Okay, so Charlie Four Toes. <laughs> that's your that's your mafia name, Charlie yep. Four Toes. Yeah. Um, 
That was that was quite a, uh, but it hasn't come back, has it? I mean, that's the end of no, the. No, it was all in 2015. All six of them decided to go bad in 2016. Come back. 15. That's, the, the toes grow back. No toes don't no, grow the, back. He asked. He said, "Hasn't come back." No, I said, "Has the the problem come back?" In other words, where he have to lose more toes. And then we'd have yeah. to like just balance him up against walls and stuff like that. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have my toes hurt when I drive a lot. Hmm. My toes hurt when I drive a lot. Do they really? My toes are my oh. feet. My feet are numb, but they're numb from my neuropathy, feet? not from not from uh, uh, what do you call? Your it? McLaren probably doesn't have cruise control, does it? My McLaren, I have to wear special shoes because my feet are so big that I hit oh. both pedals at the same time. Oh. Wait a minute, wow. wait a minute. How big are your feet? 13. 13? <laughs> big, big hands, too. You climb trees <laughs> with that thing? I'm 6'4". Six, six what do you think? 6'4". Oh, you're 6'4". I, you know, I can never tell how tall people are on this show. I know, and I just remember you as big, but, you know, because you're the star. I'm, I'm, I'm only 6 feet tall. I was always, uh, uh, I, I always said that I was an average person. Average height, average hair, average eye color, you know. I, I mean, I'm I'm six foot tall, and I wear a, and I have big hands and size fourteen feet, and a mm. penis that's this big when it's erect. <laughs> yeah, well, that's about the size of mine these days, you know. Um, because you know, fortunately, mine's just a little bigger, but I. Knew, knew somebody would throw something out there. The so. doctor, when he checked me out, he checked out, you know, he did the finger thing with the prostate, which, God, I, you know, God bless him that he took this job. You know, somebody's got to do it, but, you know, yeah. I can't, I, I was almost going to ask him this time. Maybe I'll ask him next time. What do you think your lifetime number is on the number of asses your finger has been up? Because, <laughs> I mean, if he says he's got 4,000, uh, um, uh, yeah. people patients. patients that's at least uh well there are some women who would go to a urologist yeah so let's say let's say half of them are guys he's sticking his finger up two thousand butts a year that's that's a lot of a lot of digit that's a, a lot, lot of digitizing of what it's a lot of gloves a lot of gloves, gloves yeah. yeah and i uh um you know, I, I I kind of feel sorry for him because I again, you know, I brought this up last night, the whole thing about the money that the insurance companies are just they're they're just short sheeting him, you know, uh, and he's just said it's getting rougher and rougher to have a private practice, you know. He says uh, I don't come in on Wednesdays now. I decided to start taking Wednesdays off. Why should I, you know? Why should I go crazy on this, you know? But he said it's not easy. It's funny. He always, for some reason, he always levels with me about some problem, mm. you know? And, and that problem, he just said, I said, uh, he said, well, I have 4,000 uh, patients. And I said, well, that should be pretty good, right? He says, you got to have them, he says, because the insurance. I said, because the money we get back is not that great. And I said, Medicare? And he said, oh, Medicare is, you know, what Medicare is is what Medicare is. And you, char you know, you charge Medicare and they immediately pay you. But he says it's the insurance companies that are terrible. They're trying to cut us down 20% over what they pay us now. And then, uh, I mean, they just, you know, they're just constantly niggling us and niggling us and, you know, he says it's terrible. It's so just terrible. He says, you know, and it wasn't any like right wing thing he was saying to me, like, oh, you know, the, you know, all the socialized medicine stuff. He, in fact, I think he's probably a lefty. But he, uh, you know, he just said to me that he 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 said it's very hard for doctors now, and it, it, that's why we have to have socialized medicine. That's why we have to have single payer. And so the guys like this can also survive, you know, uh, yeah. and and yeah. so that they can have a practice and and uh, not have problems with the insurance companies. Because let's let's 
do socialized medicine tomorrow. Let's do one single payer. Let's get rid of the goddamn insurance companies. Amen. Because, you know, these are guys who take money, very happy to take your money every year, and then when you get sick, oh, well, we have to okay this first, and we have right. to, you know, uh, uh, what is it, predetermine or whatever the term is for... When, yeah, you know, pre-existing conditions. Yeah, yeah. Or, or, you know, they have to okay an operation. Oh, yeah. I mean, like when I had my operations, uh, the, you know, the, uh, the, they, they had to actually have uh, uh, the insurance companies give the okay. Yeah, when uh, I had my ruptured discs back in 2013 before I got on Medicare, it took them three and a half months to okay my back surgery. Really? Three and a half months, I had to sit there in pain because they wouldn't, uh, the insurance company wouldn't okay my back surgery. Yeah, yeah, and and, and Med you know Medicare does it right away. Well, you Medicare, away, yeah, right Medicare away. okay's it, but you know the what I have, I'm paying. Well, my, my wife's company right now is paying for it. We're going to have to start paying for it in about a year. Uh, we we get I, we pay about three hundred twenty dollars a month. For medical insurance where it's they pay off everything that Medicare doesn't pay not not 13 percent or they charge you an over uh, what do you call it a, a a charge for you know for for everything a little extra money that you have to put out no they just take care of it and uh, I, I'm gonna keep that because I like that Something I got to look forward to at the end of the year. Well, you know something? we None of us should have to deal with this. You know, I talked to uh, Debbie Durst, who's Will's wife, and right. she's handling all the stuff with him being in the hospital and so on. And yeah. she says her whole life is spent dealing with the insurance companies. Yeah. Now, the only thing she should have to deal with is getting Will better, you know? And, and the insurance companies just say, don't worry about it. We'll take care of it, you know. You know yeah. And Medicare is, Medicare is pretty, pretty cut and dried. But I just think that, hey, you go into a hospital and it should be 100% paid by the government. Okay? That's it. Uh, is there anything wrong with that? You know? No. Nope. Yeah. Nope. Now, what is your, what is your, what is your, uh, what is your uh, cap say? Well, it, it I guess it worked better if I didn't. Am I blurry? I'm blurry on my side. Yeah, you're kind of blurry. You're just I, fine. No, you're not. <laughs> just my ass, right? So, um, no, the reason I, it is because you probably have that thing on autofocus and you should never yeah, have well, it on autofocus. I'm going to go look right now. See, the trouble is, autofocus ain't exactly autofocus. Uh, am I on autofocus? Hold on just a minute. We'll do this. <clears throat> mm hmm. No problem oh, reading your now, script, Brian. Now, now, oh, there you go. Okay. Now, what does it say on the cap? It says MAGA. Yeah, my attorney got arrested. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so I thought I had a PSA number here before, but you know, I do the month, I do the yearly, the yearly uh, stool sample. That's what that's what we're talking about, right? No, not PSA? Stone, it's not no. a stool sample. Mm -hmm. It's a urine no, sample. PSA. It's a oh, blood yeah. sample. Oh. It's a blood, blood sample. Yeah. Okay. Because then maybe then there's a, okay. I gotta find it. I had it on here last. It time. would be blood under blood, not under it stool. It would say PSA. Oh yeah, yeah. That's why I was looking at the results to see, but I, I don't see anything. But I know I had it before. I, I know I've had it with all my other blood work. So. My, my my friend my friend yesterday I told you he's an ophthalmologist. Mm -hmm. He has a he has a practice. So he has, he texted me back. He has thirty five hundred. 3,500 uh, patients. Mm -hmm. He says he's had he sees the majority of them like every six to twelve months. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. he doesn't have to rely on his notes anymore as much anymore. But he does say that yeah he has his folder he has notes in there for his mm -hmm. patient. Yeah. So that he but now he sees them so many years that he doesn't have to rely on that <clears throat> that much anymore. Well, I wonder how much this guy remembers me. Yeah. Okay. You know, I mean, and I don't expect him to. If he's got four thousand patients, 
Yeah. You know, and you're seeing him. You know, and I'm seeing yeah. him once. Uh, I saw him once every six months and now every nine months and now every year. I mean, come on. Yeah. You know. Now I'm sure oh, he well. knew I'm sure he knew I who I was when he was dealing with me when I had the prostate cancer and he had to send me to another doctor and he had to do the uh, you know the what do you call it the uh, um what uh, what is it when they biopsy when they did the biopsy you know I understand that you know that he would remember me then but I think after that I think it's kind of like yeah I think I know him but let me look down here to make sure I know him yeah. Kaiser, Kaiser, which I belong to, has a, you know, a, in their computer system, when you see a new doctor that may, or, or even your regular doctor, it, the first thing it does is it has a picture of you and tells your name and your age. So right on the top. So your doctor can look look over at the screen and say, oh, yeah, Alan, how you doing? It's good seeing you. We haven't <laughs> seen you in six months. And you think that he knows and remembers, and he may but you don't know. Well, I mean, maybe it has the name of your my wife down there and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, how's how's Marjorie? You know, it may, it may. I don't know. I, I don't have a wife. I went so. to one doctor and he my was he, he he was looking through my my stuff and he was reading it back to me all wrong. It was like he almost <laughs> had another person in the room with him. You know, Jesus. that's a doctor you want to. Oh, well, he was he was the worst urologist. You know, I. Yep. I, I hated urologists until this guy, and, and I had a urologist that I'm. I swear he was padding the bill, okay? Because anytime I had blood in my urine, and I, I've always had a trace of blood in my urine for twenty years, okay? Uh, it, but every time he would find blood in my urine, he'd want to give me a cystoscopy. I had about two or three cystoscopies with this guy. Ouch. And and this doctor, I go to him. He says, "I want some blood in your in your urine." But I looked at it under a microscope, and it's so negligible; it's nothing to worry about. I said, "I've always had blood in my urine." He says, "A lot of people do. You know, it comes from the kidneys or somewhere. We don't yep. know what, but it isn't profound, and it, you can't see it. And it's it's that's fine." And I'm thinking to myself, "Then why did I get this goddamn snake stuck up my penis for? <laughs> you know." <laughs> God, that sounds horrible. It is. You haven't had it done. It's uncomfortable. Uh, your mic all of a sudden is too loud there. I'm oh, sorry. Shit. Yeah, yeah. Turn it down. We only I didn't do anything. It, 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 but I will it, turn it down. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, it, yeah, no. I, I, well, I, a cystoscopy is it's just annoying. It's not that it's painful. It's just annoying. Uh, yeah, so um, I'm sure people love hearing about this. Well, how, how many people are listening now? Oh, well, we got enough people, you know. Yeah. But, that uh, yeah, that's fine. Yep. You're right. Autofocus is on. Now it's off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I had to go into my settings. Sorry. That's okay. It's all right. You know. Now I look horrible, but that's okay. Who cares? Yeah. So, uh, anyway, uh, you know. So they, we, I was watching the news tonight, and they have all these ice storms all over the country, and I mean, it's something to watch. I mean, yep. they have giant trucks sliding all over the road and jackknifing. But I, and I told you this last night, the best video they had out there though was this woman who was on her hands and knees crawling across the street <laughs> because she couldn't walk, you know. Uh, and it's terrible, but you know, here in New York, we don't, ha we aren't having that problem. But we are going to have some cold nights tomorrow night. Supposed to go down to like four degrees or something like that, you know. So, um, and uh, let me see here. What else? Oh, did you see? Uh, did you see the Trump? Uh, we haven't talked about Trump in a while. No. Uh, Trump. Uh, Trump's really been handling doing these rallies. But they say he has toned himself down. He's not getting as much money, too. They said the first, I forget how long, but these first months or something like that, since mm -hmm. he announced it, he had like, he got $12 million rallied mm -hmm. or you know, donated. Now the second, the second period, the same amount of time, only like $9 million. So they see all the people who, you know, donated, donated right away. 
and now it's starting to starting to go down a little bit. Well, he made a lot of money though off those uh, those uh, 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 what do you call it? pictures that he was selling. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, no. You know, yeah, still nine and twelve NFTs. million. He gets a pocket that if he doesn't get president, right? Oh yeah, yeah. But uh, he supposedly is toning himself down a little bit to make and and he's gone into states now that he didn't go into last time. Mm -hmm. Uh, has malaria been with him yet? Have no. Have you seen him with malaria? <laughs> no. No. Nope. Malaria hasn't. Right. Yeah, I, 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 we talked about that before, and I said, I don't think he'll be seen with her ever again. Well, I think she may. She's about to be indicted as well because oh, really? it's oh. on their taxes. Oh, so that, mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, <laughs> you know, but, uh, but uh, he, um, uh, but he didn't tone it down too much because I saw a, a, a thing he did, uh, a video that he did about that he was all against uh, pronouns. He says, mm -hmm. I'm going to sign an executive order saying that only he and she will be allowed. You have to use the, uh, the, the sex you were assigned at birth. By who? Yep. <laughs> you know. Uh, assigned you know, a certain percentage aren't aren't assigned any sex at birth. What do you mean? That means that they're like hermaphrodites, and they the parents have to make a choice. Well, you want them to be male or female, hmm. and they figure out which which organs to remove. Right now, how many how so, many how, how many people do that have that? Well, it's something like three or four percent of the population. Really, that high? Yeah. Wow. Trump was one of those. He removed his penis and his tits. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, you guys brought up Trump. I didn't bring it up. I didn't bring it up. Can't no, no, me. but it isn't that you It isn't that you didn't bring it up. It's that you mentioned him. You, that's a list about no, you. you that's a list about you. Hold that list up again so the audience can <laughs> see it. These are the things he says that we can pretty well. Yeah, this is the... Rather. Trump, Mar-a-Lago, and Republican. Oh, what hey, you said all of them. He you just said Mar-a-Lago. Just... Yeah, I did. <laughs> I wanted to make sure that I can read still. Did Did you see that prayer? That what they have that prayer day or whatever that, that the, was? Yeah, the prayer luncheon. And Biden sitting next to McCarthy and. Well, McCarthy's <laughs> toned himself down a little bit. If you mm -hmm. notice, you know. Uh, the Republicans want to want to change Medicare and Social Security yep. with this budget that they're not going to pass, cause the country to go into a deep depression. Everybody, the Fed, the the, the everybody's. Well, what do they want to change about about Social Security? Uh, well, it's going to come to a stop if the, if it, and so will Medicare temporarily if they don't uh, uh, approve the budget. Well, the they point, want to raise the age on Social Security. Yes, that's true. Too. They should lower the age on Social Security. Yep. Yeah. And the reason everybody's going to me, well, why should they? Because, very simply and explicitly, let me just say that uh, it's very hard to get a job. If, if you lose a job at 50, at 60 rather, you can have a hard time getting another job. You know, I mean, uh, to to do anything else. So we really need to have Social Security start at 50, at 60. I'd even oh. want it at 55, but 60 would be fine. Or that you could opt for 60 or you could wait till 65 and you just get a little bit more, you know. Yeah, so 60 is only two years before it is now. But, well, 62, you can do it if you want to. I did it at 62. I want to get the money out of the government, whatever I can. I have retirement and other assets, but they don't care if you want to get at 62. You know, my full retirement age is 68. I may not make it, you know, so let's get some money oh, back. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, so how old are you now? 64. 64. So you, you've been taking Social Security for a while now. Two years. Mm -hmm. And how much, how much do you get every month? Uh, I don't know, eleven, twelve hundred dollars, something like that. Really, that little? Uh, because I I put into a retirement system, and so part of the time they weren't putting into Social Security. 
They weren't putting it in. Who wasn't putting it into Social Security? The city that I worked for. They're supposed to. They're supposed to. Yeah. It's no, a, no. Some government agencies don't have to. Oh, That's really? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so you do you then get benefits from the city? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. And how much do you get from them a month? A lot. Well, what's a, what's a lot? Come on. I don't know. Like, uh... No personal. About about three thousand. Yeah. Like okay. That. All right. That's good. That's good. So, so you like, add that. Am I, ex, am I am I extra thousand? So I'm getting four thousand retirement. You know. Yeah. No. That's fine. That's good. That's good. I can I could even afford to rent the place you're in. <laughs> yeah. Well. You know. My, I, my expenses are pretty low. I I, I hope know. the day doesn't come that I have to say we have to move out of this place. It's too expensive. You know, I mean, then I know in bad shape. Yeah. But uh, I've kind of, uh, you know, I'm, it, there, are, uh, there are these, do you ever watch these things on YouTube about the smallest apartment in New York City? Do you ever watch yeah. those? Yeah. And, and this is the cheapest apartment in New York City. That's right. And I sit there just laughing at it, going, that's not the cheapest apartment in New York City. Not at six fifty a month. No. Right. By square footage, it certainly is. Oh, by square footage, no, it's is. no. Th there, I don't think there's another apartment. I I watch these things. I you know because I was kind of out of the housing market for the last God as long as we've lived here. You know, we it, the clock stopped at that point, and I was renting a place downtown that was, oh what it was two twenty five hundred a month, something like that. You know. But now I watch these things, and they're like one-bedroom apartments, hovels, okay, one-bedroom apartments, four thousand dollars. <throat> and I'm yeah, there. Yeah, there, there's there's something on Facebook tonight actually, and it was a house in Palo Alto. It's really really small, leaking the walls, all this bad stuff, and it's still one point three million. <laughs> That's the worth of the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I. Upper. A fixer upper, yeah. Well, I don't get it. You know, I mean, I uh, all of a sudden I'm seeing these places, these little hovel. How much are you paying for this? Uh, this is uh, this is only only two thousand a month, and I'm going. You know, I mean, this apartment. If I didn't have happen what happened, uh, and I was just paying the rent stabilized price, it would be about twenty. Two thousand two two thousand two hundred and twenty five dollars a month, mm. and it's what three rooms, giant living room, giant dining room, giant uh, kitchen, uh, a giant foyer. I mean, it's, the foyer could be a studio apartment, mm -hmm. you know. And 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 yet, if I didn't get this deal that's happened to us. We probably would have had to pay about two thousand two hundred and twenty-five dollars a month, and that's nothing compared to these other places. And I'm seeing they're like one-bedroom apartments for twenty-five hundred or three thousand. Yep. Unfortunate. Yeah. I, 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 what? What? It's a bedroom. One bedroom. Yeah, one-bedroom apartment. Well, this guy who was showing these things is going. Well, this is only five thousand dollars a month, but that's not five thousand dollars because there are three bedrooms in this place, and then you could each rent out one bedroom, you know. And here's how much. So they divide the five thousand by three. I'm sorry, it's five thousand dollars a month. Uh -huh. Okay, let's not say well, you know, it's actually more like uh, twelve hundred dollars a month per person. You're paying more than I am. Huh? I paid my house off last year. Did you really? Yeah. yeah. yeah it's uh, worth $1.8 million. It's not as ritzy as Brian's neighborhood, but a couple thousand square feet, four bedroom, two bath, you know, nice neighborhood. Yeah, but, I, but, I but, uh, but you could Brian say. Brian lives in a more. Classy. You could say, if I ever needed the money, I could always sell it. But if you sold <clears> it, you would then have to go into another place. That's the problem. And how much is that going to cost? Yeah, well, I, you know, yeah. say the average price in Fremont, one and a half million dollars. You know, the down payment is going to be two hundred and fifty, three hundred thousand dollars. No, but that doesn't matter. The property tax will kill you. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. 
That, that's the my, thing. I'd like to. I'd like to get a different house, but it's the property tax. I it's, my, my property taxes are less than twenty five hundred a year. Yeah, that's. <laughs> Uh, I, now, now somebody's a little <laughs> more pissed, huh? Yeah. No, I, I know, and that's why I that's why we can't I, but move. I, but I bought my house when I was 19. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, really? So, oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. I was doing cocaine and hookers at 19. Yeah, okay. that's where I was spending all my <laughs> money. like you were having more fun than I was. <laughs> you know, uh, we, I, was, I, I was talking to uh, tonight to, to Kravitz, if you heard it. Uh, I, I don't know if I, we discussed it. No, it's uh, next week we discuss it. But I, you know, we were talking about the fact, I said, did you have a happy childhood? And he said, yes, a very happy childhood. And I said, you know, I saw somebody being interviewed and they said, oh, I had a lousy childhood. My father was a drunk and my mother was a this. <laughs> and, I don't know. and I'm thinking, man, my childhood was wonderful. I, I had a great childhood. Do you think kids have the chance of a great childhood as much today as we did when we were younger? Probably not. You know? I don't know. I don't know. A lot of kids are running around with iPads and iPhones and stuff. You and I had walkie-talkies. Well, no, walkie but I'll everything. tell you, I, I don't know that iPads uh, make it a better world. I mean, I'm talking about they go to school and they got to go through a metal detector yeah yeah you know the i tell yeah, mentioned those, huh those, those live shooter uh, Dr drills yeah active shooter. Yeah. Yeah. yeah active, active shooter, shooter lessons shooter. instead of duck and cover lessons no where they teach mm -hmm. each of the kids how to be an active shooter you know <laughs> yeah. or or if there's an active shooter at school don't go yeah and both parents have to work now whereas when i was growing up yep. we could buy on one salary Yep. Yep. And I mean, and kids today, I mean, I, I mentioned this last <clears throat> night, they, you know, the school where the teacher got shot by a six year old student. How yeah. does that even happen? You know, lock and, up the parents. I mean, I you had, to, yeah. when I was a kid, you had to reach at least 10 before you became a juvenile delinquent, you know, but now you're shooting your teacher at, ten, at, at, at six years old. You know, if you and and at that school, they're making the parents send their kids to school with transparent backpacks. Yep. Okay. At six years old, that seems a bit excessive. I mean, there's some, there's some good things, too, because I can track my kids through here. So I, I know exactly where they are, or at least where their phone is. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, there, there is some good stuff there, but there's... Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of freedom that they don't have like we had. I mean, I, I'd be gone in the morning, Saturday, Sunday morning. I don't remember telling my parents, like, no, I'm going right. to Bob's house. I was just gone, and I came back at night. We you moved know? over to Marin at 11 uh, when I was 11. Yeah. And I'm, I would say to my mother, uh, I'll be back uh, later. She said, be home for dinner. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That was it. Get that to be home for dinner. You know, now they don't let their kids out of their sight. If I got good grades and was home for dinner, I got my allowance every month. Mm -hmm. How much was your allowance? Well, when I, be, until I reached 14, it was $300 a week. What? Well, uh, a, a month. I'm sorry, a month. Still a month. What? A month. A month. That's still a lot. I hate to think. I hate. I, I hate to think how much. I hate, it moved up a little bit. I hate so. to think how much the uh, tooth fairy left you. You know. The quarter from when I was growing up. Oh, and I uh, exactly I when I grew up, it was a quarter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a dollar or something like that. I mean, you know, my it, when you were losing your baby teeth, a dollar was a lot of money. But as I got older, I mean, I had I had expenses. I had a car when I was fifteen, and it, it was an old clunker. I should have hung on to yeah. it for Brian. But he wouldn't have wanted it. Maybe he would have. I don't but know. I mean, I cherish my childhood. I mean, I, I, how I got this screwed up, I have no idea. But you know, it wasn't caused by my parents or for lack of trying. I don't know. It seems like you're doing pretty good to me. I have somebody who's trying to come on named Tammy R. Er. You got to know like, that that's not sounds anybody. Sounds like Phil Meyer. Huh? Not, not <laughs> I said, sounds like Phil Meyer. Let me see here. Let me remove them and just see if they try to come back. Okay. 
All right. Anyway, so Tammy's been removed. But I mean, I you know, I just I I just think that uh, I I I was brought up at a time when you know my life was pretty good as a kid. You were yeah. brought up in depression years, though, weren't you? No. No. After? Are, are you out of your mind? Yes. <laughs> He's making a joke. No. <laughs> I was born in nineteen. I was born in nineteen thirty-nine, on the edge of World War Two. Yeah. And during the World War, that's correct. During we the act, Second we World actually War, we weren't involved in nineteen thirty-nine. No, no, we didn't get into it till what forty-one, I think. Forty-one, yeah, December seventh of forty-one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And uh, you know, I I, I uh, had a pretty good life. Hmm? If it, if if you ask somebody in the room that's from San Francisco back thirty years ago to pick anybody in this room that 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 is somebody was somebody, they'd say Alex Bennett. Everybody knew your name thirty years ago in San Francisco. Was that thirty years ago? I I don't know how long it was. I think it was pretty. It was well. It was. It was the. Uh, Maybe thirty years. Ago. Yeah, 19, 1980 to... Uh, That's 40. Oh, you should see what somebody just put up here. Can you see who's trying to come into the room? You can't no. see it. No. It says George N-word Floyd. Oh, my God. Um, I would report them. I think I, yeah. I, think I will. Okay. Uh, remove. And then it says report to Zoom. Okay. I go, I remove, and then they say, uh, uh, racist. Let me put down here, it says, what happened? Uh, offensive, illegal, abusive. It doesn't have down racist here. Okay, and submit. Okay, there we go. Thank you for submitting your report. Okay. And then it says George N-word Floyd on the, on the report. So, you know. Oh, God. These people have been trying lately. I may have to. I may have to figure out another way of. Of, you see, the problem is I have to post this uh, this address, in order for people to to use it to yeah. call the show, and uh, I would like not to. I wish it were like more like Skype, where you know anybody can call and then I can either answer it or not answer it. Yeah. But in this case, it's like I get you get annoyed by these people now, you know, and they it, it's just you don't get to see them. I think you're the only one that's annoyed mm -hmm. because, of, because you're the one, you're the host. Right? Well, I can you know I don't have to answer. I can just let them sit there and waste their time. You know, somebody that's that racist to put that in there. I think I'd let them sit there. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I I was mentioning to you last night this guy I was. Uh, this cab driver I had. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, which was just, it was, he it was splendid. It was just splendid. Um, uh, he hated, he, he felt that uh, uh, the, the Capitol riots were good and that Nancy Pelosi should have gotten killed. I'll send you one of these red hats. You can give it to him. Next no, time. No, no, no. I mean, you should send him a, <laughs> no, you should send him a Nazi hat, something with right. a, a Nazi symbol. Oh, now it's N-word faggot. See, now he's got that oh, twice. Oh, yeah, like that's going to help him get on the show. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to help him get on the show. Right. Anyway. Maybe I should, I, you know, I'll just leave him there. I'll just leave yeah. him there. Yeah, I'll keep him busy. Yeah, just leave it there. I'm just going to leave it there for a while. He can. Uh, at the last minute report him. <laughs> huh? No, I mean, I'll, I'll leave him there, uh, and he can just waste his time. Uh. I, I don't know why people do that. You know, because they're losers. I yeah. guess maybe they have nothing else to do with their lives. But anyway, so, if anybody listens to this show more than one night, they're they're going to find out that you're pro gay, pro pro you know civil rights, pro you know you're. I mean you're. you're, you're well, you're, I'll, you're, I'll tell you what. A couple of problems with Zoom. I'll give you a couple of problems with Zoom. What are what are a couple of problems with Zoom, Alex? Well, glad you asked. Uh, you shouldn't be able to change your name. Mm -hmm. You you should be have to sign up with using your real name, okay, or whatever name you want to use. 
Okay. Uh, and, and then that's it. You know, that's what you're signed in as. But you can't, like, right now, this guy could just change his name on there and come back on again with the new name. Uh -huh. And they should do away with that. They should not make that. That's not, you know. They should give people an option maybe for their name not to be shown, uh, but uh, uh, not to be able to change it, you know. And uh, how, do, how do I change my name? I, I'll add my last name to it. Well, see, all you got to do is you go down here, you see there, and then you go to, uh, I can change it for you. Change it. It's W-T-I-N. But, but, no, but the fact right. is that after you sign off, it'll go oh. back, it'll revert to this. Okay. okay. It doesn't matter to you, me. Everybody you can do it. You can you can rename it. You're fine up there. That's fine. Yeah. You know, but I mean, it just it's just uh, uh, th there are some problems here with with Zoom in that respect. You know, and then occasionally Zoom will get a hold of me and say, "Well, it's dangerous of you to post your name your uh, address online." You know, well, and you, I'm you going. Really, huh? you, sorry. You know what's really dangerous is. You know, at Safeway or at any of the grocery stores, they ask people what their phone number is so they can go on their rewards. So you have a lady mm -hmm. there who mm -hmm. has some guy following her or something, and he gets her phone number right away. Yeah. Yeah. But I hear that all the time. I'm like, I can't believe that this lady or even people, you know, that they're just out out loud saying their phone number so they can log on and get rewards from, from the... Those are, those are the same cashier. people that if the clerk asked them for their social security number, the whole store would hear it. Mine is, I say, 408-123-4567. And they look at me, and I say, go ahead and punch it up. And they punch it up. And they say, oh, Brian? I said, yes. Yeah, yeah. Because they, they, don't, they don't need that number for anything. They're just using it as a number, as a unique number for you. But I just use that number every time. And they just stare. This is a grocery you, store, and they're asking for your they, number? They for yeah, for and the little safe way. Yeah, the little keypad. They ask for the phone number, but yeah. there's some places that you they ask you, "Oh, what's your phone?" Like your like uh, orchard or. Well, why or, do they need your phone hardware. number? What the hell do they need? They you? look up your rewards that way. Yeah, it's a unique so identifier. Rewards. Yeah, so they say, "Oh, what's your phone? Do you have a phone number with us?" And you say yes, and they say their phone number out loud where everybody can hear. They right. punch up their number and they say, "Oh yeah, blah blah,", blah. and then you can then they'll add your payment there so you get rewards for it later yeah I, I remember the phone number i had as a kid and so that's the number i use i don't know who has it now yeah. i'm sure somebody does but the, do they ever do off. anything with that phone number like contact you nope. through it nope. or tell nope. you about nope. your rewards nope. plan nope. through it nope. no nope. they use the address that you put in so there. you can just make yeah, up a phone you know. make up a phony phone number yeah give yep. it to them i see okay yeah because I, I don't even use my real address <laughs> what? Because I, I don't think some guys, some guys see some cute girl there and gets yeah. the phone, some weird sicko guy, you know, and yeah. Yeah. No, Crazy. I mean, they, they, it should be, you should actually, what they should do is they should have you put it in on a keypad. Yeah. Do a right. biometric. Some places. You just touch the screen biometric yeah. with your finger. Well, that they some have. Places, but. Yeah, but what yeah, Walgreens I'm has a keypad that you key it in on. That's the only. That's why that's the only store I do any kind of rewards Ace, with. Yeah. Ace Hardware asks for it out loud, and so yeah. does uh, like Orchard Hardware Supply. Yeah, these. Yeah. yeah. All they should do is they should have a keypad, and you just put it in the keypad. All the yeah. people, yeah. all the people with the number that you use, Charlie, are in the dark right now because of Walgreens. <laughs> what does Walgreens do? Yeah, Walgreens, isn't that who you said had your, your number? Yeah. Yeah, Walgreens down around the corner didn't agree with the. the By the way, power. Charlie, just, just, just in case you haven't tried, have you looked next door to see if their lights are off? <laughs> Yeah, it's oh, okay. If you look outside, it's totally dark in any far as you can see. Oh, I, by the way, the Walgreens I go to is in the dark too because they oh. they don't have any power either. Oh. This whole area, no power. What what's happening to people who like? <laughs> uh, okay, let's say you have a heart attack right now. Can they get a uh, ambulance out to you? Um, I hope so. With your cell phone, there's always, you know. Secondary damage of people that die because the ambulance can't get to them. Right. They have like this. Well, I mean, this is you know, this is terrible. 
this is just terrible what's happening to you. And I, 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 I was, I, Jack was on last night though, so I guess he wasn't in in the dark there. Yeah, he's got power there. He hadn't lost any power. Yeah, but he said when he talked to him early in the day, earlier in the day, he said that it was, uh, you know, pretty, I think, pretty I dicey. Think if we vote Trump back in, he's going to fix it so no snowstorms <laughs> happen. Hmm. He came yeah. up with this. He came up with this stupid thing. Oh, let's see here. Yeah, you Trump again. You got to you got to put a cross on it again. Um, so he came up with something in the news the other day and said he's going to protect the United if you vote him in as president in 2024, he's going to protect the United States from from bombs and stuff. He's going to put a dome over the United States. Yeah, I saw that. A the, dome? Uh, oh my God. Wait a minute. 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 Did Trump actually say that? Yes. Yeah, yes. he said it. Yes. He's going to put a dome over the entire country. Yes, yes, to protect us from missile attacks in World War Three. You sure he is? You sure he is? that they let airplanes in and out. Well, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, well, they have a dome over Israel, but it's it's a a, a technical dome, not yeah. a not a real dome. Not a physical. No. Dome. It's called a yeah, dome. But I think Trump had the physical. Dome do you think that's... maybe he was referring to what I'm referring to? Maybe is you know. What, uh, what did Reagan call it? The Iron Dome or the Iron? Yeah. The Iron Dome. That's it. Yeah. 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 Um, it, that works with his uh, space. Uh, uh, oh, that'll go just fine with all the uh, you know the uh, 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 checking of backpacks at schools and you know all of yeah. that. Would just have a totally paranoid. Uh, uh, we almost got that in 2020 if he got reelected. But there's a lot of people yeah. that are starting to run against them, right? They they have a big list yeah. of people that are starting to. Oh yeah, he's he's not going to have the field to himself. Yeah, no. they say it's going to dilute dilute Marjorie everything. Marjorie Trash Can Green is going to run against them. Well, what he should have done was shut up for a couple of years, and then he shouldn't have said he was going to run as early as he said he was going to run. And, uh, you know, uh, he, then he might have had a chance of getting the nomination. He's like a crybaby. He wants the attention. Yeah. So that's why he he's needs attention. Early. Yeah, I mean, this is not the way to do it. It's not the way to get the nomination. Oh. Now, I don't know who's going to get it with all the people that might be entering into it. Everybody's talking, oh, DeSantis is going to be the nominee or whatever. And I don't know if DeSantis is going to necessarily run. I don't know. I just want to watch. I just want to watch Trump go crazy on all of them. <laughs> well, I mean, he already has started going after DeSantis and calling him yeah. names. You know, Ron. What what's the name he's got for him? Uh, uh, it's his biggest competitor. Uh, Desanctified. Desanctimonious. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my God! He, uh, this, uh, it's after this all done, I he's I, afraid I DeSantis is going to run. When Adrian starts learning about politics, when I tell him the stories of this clown. Oh well, you think DeSantis is going to run? I don't know. Phil seems to think so. No, well, I don't. I don't, I don't I know if he's necessarily going to run. You know, hmm. I mean, we'll have to wait and see. But you know, I don't think Trump's going to get the nomination. That I that, that I don't think is uh, is is a set. Uh, I think Thanks. we should start praying right now. No, yeah. but 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 it's going to be fun to watch because you know, right when those guys say something bad about Trump, Trump's going to fire back, and it's just going to be this. It's going to be so fun. <laughs> you, you, won't take, you won't take the Fifth Amendment. Oh, no, well, I good. think he is actually being. He's going to be a little quieter this time. Uh, Wait, can, can you see the guys going after him, saying, "You know, you told people to stick a, a you know, bleach, you know, drink bleach, <laughs> or something." <laughs> Oh, well, that's it. You know. So anyway, you're off to Florida tomorrow, right, oh, Jeff? I'm looking forward to it, yeah. You're looking yeah. forward to Oh, yeah, rub our nose in it. Is the power <laughs> on? Is it warm there? <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, it's warm here, Yesterday too. Yesterday I checked it out. It was 75. Or... Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Anyway, that's it for tonight. Uh, thank you so much, Jeff, for joining us. As, and the same thing for Brian. And, and to, uh, you know, if you, here's the, the problem with being black, Charlie. <laughs> we would be able to see you much better if you were white. 
Okay, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. That's his life. And then you got that That's stupid life. star above your head too, Charlie. <laughs> yeah. You take that oh, down. you can see that. Oh, okay. Yeah, you got to take that down. Season's over. <laughs> and finally, Alan, thank you for joining us. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay. There they go, folks. There they go. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Oh boy, I couldn't get, can't get out words tonight. I, for some reason, Mike, I'm having trouble forming thoughts. I think it's because I didn't get enough sleep last night. Anyway, hey, here's a guy who'll keep you up awake late at night. His name is Jack Bishop. He's next over most of the same gabnet. I'll see you again tomorrow. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody.